Okay, today we're going to do a lab, and it is a classic physics problem that somebody is standing on a scale in a moving elevator. So there's two parts to this lab, and the first part is this section here, part A. And this one, you're not going to be standing on the scale in the elevator. While we're going in groups of four on the elevator, the rest of you are going to be outside the elevator, and I'm going to have this stuff on a cart for you to do it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a spring scale and you're going to make sure it's calibrated on zero. So if it's not exactly on zero, you just move the top like this. Then you're going to take a one kilogram mass and you're going to hang it on the spring scale and you're going to record the weight in newtons. Okay. Then you're going to, and you just follow the directions, you're going to accelerate it upward and then you're going to write that down as the highest reading, then you're going to move it at a constant velocity, and then you're going to read the lowest reading, okay? And that's it. The rest of the time, we're going to go in groups of four in the elevator and do this part. So what is this all about? It's something called apparent weight. So apparent weight means when you're standing on a scale, that's going to give you your weight, and the reading on the scale is actually your normal force, and we'll look at the free body diagram. But what happens is, whether or not the elevator is accelerating or moving at a constant velocity, what you're going to see is in certain circumstances, your actual weight on the scale is going to change. When the elevator is moving at a constant velocity, the reading on the scale is going to be the same as, as, it, as if the elevator wasn't moving. If the elevator has a positive acceleration, you're going to weigh more on the scale than you do when the elevator is not moving. And when it has a negative acceleration, it's going to give you a reading that's less than your actual weight. And that's why it's called apparent weight, because that's what it looks like you weigh, depending upon the acceleration of the elevator. So that's where apparent weight comes from. So anyway, if we look at the lab, it says in step two, why did the mass appear to gain weight when being accelerated upward? So when you see the word explain, you're going to write it in words. And then when you see provide a mathematic equation, you're going to do the equation. So here... It's when you gain weight, and here is when you're going to lose weight. Over here, we're going to do conversions. So let's say you step on the scale. So before we do anything, you're going to step on the scale and see how much you weigh. So let's, say, let's just pretend that you weigh 130 pounds. Then the elevator is going to go up. Now the elevator is going to have a positive acceleration. So you're going to look, and it might just be for like a, like a second or two, the maximum apparent weight, so let's say the, the scale goes up to 140 pounds. Then once the elevator starts moving at a constant velocity, what you're going to see is it goes back to the reading that you have when it's not accelerating, and then the lowest reading, just before it gets to the top, when it, starts, when it has a negative acceleration, you might see the elevator, your scale go down to 120 pounds. So what you're looking for is the whole time we're on the elevator and we're going up and down, I don't want to see your head move. I want your head staring at the scale, and you're just going to look, read your weight. Now, you don't have to write it down. You can remember three numbers in your head. So you're going to look at what your weight is. You're going to look for the maximum reading that you see on the scale, and then you're going to look for the mean, minimum. And we're going to use these values later on. Now in steps five, six, and seven, you're going to convert. So here it says at rest, so that would be the first one. So you would have, let's say, 130. This is pounds. If pounds is in the numerator, we put pounds in the denominator, and we want to convert from newtons to pounds. So one newton is 0.225. So you just take your weight and you divide by that, and then you get your weight in newtons. Then you do the same thing for your maximum value, and then you do the same thing for your minimum value here. All right, so let's explain what's going on in the elevator, okay? So let's say you're at rest. At rest or a constant velocity, both of these situations mean that the acceleration is zero, okay? So let's look at our free body diagram. You have your force of weight acting down, and then you have your normal, force, your normal force acting up, right? The normal force is actually what the scale reading is, okay? So if we sum forces and we said summation of F net is equal to MA, 
What are we going to re replace here with our net forces? We have our reading on our scale going up, which is positive, minus our weight, and that's equal to MA. Now, if it's at rest or moving at a constant velocity, the acceleration is zero. So this goes to zero, and that's why the reading on our scale is equal to our weight. Okay, now that makes sense. Now let's say the elevator is accelerating up. So what we're going to see here is we have a positive acceleration, and this is actually going to be our maximum value. So again, we're going to actually have the same free body diagram. Here is the reading on the scale, and then we have our weight going down. And when we sum our forces, it's the same equation. Summation of F net is equal to MA, except here we have an acceleration. So now we replace this with F scale minus the weight is equal to MA. Now, in part of this lab, I want you to calculate the acceleration of the elevator. So if I rearrange this equation to solve for the acceleration, I'm going to have F scale minus Fg over M is equal to A. Now I know F of G is going to be my weight, Mg, but this is my reading anyway. So in order to find my mass here, we know F of G is equal to Mg, so mass is equal to my weight over G to substitute in here. So now I'm going to get the positive acceleration of the elevator. So this is the equation, and then later on I'm going to substitute this in and calculate the acceleration of the elevator. When the elevator has a negative acceleration, when it's slowing down, I'm going to have my same free body diagram. See, the free body diagram isn't changing, is it? Okay. So again, summation of F net is equal to MA, and I replace it F scale minus FG is equal to MA. So F scale minus FG over M is equal to A. The only difference between these two is when it's accelerating up, the reading on my scale is going to be my maximum value, okay? And then here, the reading on the scale is going to be my minimum value. So this acceleration is going to be positive, and this one is going to be negative, okay? This is a classic physics problem. You will see problems like this on any type of standardized test in physics. So if you're taking the SAT2 in physics, when you go on to take college physics, you're going to see this standard problem. Now, we're all different the way we learn. Some of us, we can understand it maybe by looking at the free body diagram conceptually. For me personally, I understand things better when I look at it mathematically and I can actually see the numbers. Okay. So let's say I make up numbers and here, the reading on my scale is 500 newtons, so I weigh 500 newtons. Here, if I weigh 500 newtons, the reading on the scale might be 600 newtons, okay? So if I have 600 minus 500, which would be 100 divided by my mass, the acceleration is going to be positive. Here, if this was 500 newtons and the reading on the scale was 400 newtons, then my acceleration is going to be negative, okay? And that's it.